Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's look at different ways that you can use markup tools with your photos in the Photos app. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. So in the Photos app when you go to Edit a Photo you can make adjustments, use filters, or crop and rotate the photo. But in addition to that you can also click here and access extensions added by apps that you've installed. I see a few Affinity Photo extensions, Pixelmator Pro, and Acorn. But even if you don't have any of those you're going to have this one, Markup. And you'll see this Markup tool is the same tool that you'll see in apps like Preview and Mail. You can use it to mark up your photos in the Photos app as well. One thing you may want to use it for is to simply create a border around your photo. That may make it look a little bit better if you share it online or print it out. You can click here to go to Shapes, select a rectangle shape, and simply drag the edges of the rectangle so they go to the edges of the photo. You can adjust the size of the line here. You can go here to adjust the color. And also you've got this artistic style right here to create a different looking border. When you click Save Changes the border becomes part of the photo. But remember Photos is non-destructive so you can always go to Edit and then Revert to Original. Of course you can use shapes for a lot more than just a border. You can go and add arrows and circles. So let's go in here and add a circle. And We can take the circle and drag it to something. We can continue to work with the size here, the type of line, the color, and place it wherever we want. We can have more than one circle as well. And you can also of course use arrows and lines. So let's create an arrow here and instead of circle we simply have an arrow that points to the object that we want. There are a few other shapes here as well like stars for instance. You can add a star here and you've got these green dots. One will change the number of points and the other one you can drag to change the shape of the star. We can go here and put a color to fill the shape. And we can get rid of the outline and just have a star like that. And we could drag the corner to resize. You can zoom in. I'm going to use the trackpad to do that and work with the shapes a little easier because it's hard to select the center of the circle. And you can use this for all sorts of interesting things. People like to add shapes kind of like as stickers to their photos. If I hold the Option key down and drag it creates a copy right there. So I could very easily put a number of different stars, resize some of them, and change the colors to create effects that I've seen in other photos posted online. Something like that. I'm sure you can do a better job than me. Now note that you could put text inside of shapes. So the most obvious use for that is this little speech bubble here. You can position that where you want. There are green dots here for the length of the arm there and the shape of it and then you can change its color if you want and then just double click inside and start typing. You change the font that you're using and the size right in here. You can also center the text and create whatever you want. There is one other shape here I want to point out. This is called a loop as in a little magnifier that you can put on the image. So you can position it where you want. The blue dot will change the size and the green dot will change the magnification. And you can place it there. And it's a way to zoom in and see a little bit more of your photo. And it's a great way to zoom in or point out a part of the photo. And you can see it will stay there. You can also have multiple loops on the same photo. Now you can also just add text to your photo. Just click right here and then you get this little text box. You can type what you want, position it, change its color right in here, and then make it larger as well. Change the font to something else and then drag to position it. You can even rotate the text using a trackpad. Just two fingers on the trackpad and twist and you can rotate it a little bit. Instead of using the text box use a rectangle like that. And then the rectangle you can position and take up part of the image like that. And then just like with the speech bubble you could type in here like that. Or you could use a rounded rectangle. Place it something like that. It depends what type of effect you want. But there's another way to use text as well. Just use regular text here. But instead of typing regular letters 
use Control Command Space to bring up the Emoji and Special Character Viewer and then choose an Emoji Character. You can think of these like stickers. You have all these different fun characters you can now add. Increase the font size a little bit so it's bigger. You can even rotate it uh, using the trackpad there. You can also go here to where the line shadow is and this affects text as well. So you can add a little bit of a shadow to it. And then you can place fun stickers all over. And in addition to all the different emoji you're familiar with, there's also a complete set of flags as part of the emoji set, which means you can label your travel pictures with flags of the countries you're visiting. Now, drawing on photos is something people have done since before we had photos on computers. And you see a lot of this online as well. So you can use these drawing tools right here. Be sure to set a color first. So we'll just draw with white right here. This one draws kind of like an ink pen. It gets thicker the more you draw. And notice how we get the drop shadow here because we still have the shadow turned on. You can set the thickness of the line right there. So let's draw with this right here which will create a line that stays the same thickness. And you could do all sorts of interesting things. I've seen people outline subjects in photos like this. And when you're finished drawing you notice it tries to snap to a shape and you can click here to tell it no you want the actual thing that you drew. And then you could after the fact go in and edit the line and the color. I'm horrible at drawing but I'm sure you can do a much better job. You could choose a thicker line or even this kind of line right here and then draw using that. And then sometimes I've seen people draw over the subject with this. You can go in here, go to Show Colors, it brings up the color picker and you can change the transparency here to make this semi-transparent which leads to all sorts of different interesting effects that you could do. Now a variation on that is to use this button here to allow you to draw using your iPhone or iPad. Particularly useful if you've got an iPad with an Apple Pencil. As an example I'm going to use this iPhone right here. I'm going to select it and instantly I'm going to see the photo appear here on my iPhone. I could turn it on its side and make it a little easier to use the tools. And everything I do here I'm going to see on my Mac in real time. So I'm going to draw here and use all sorts of different tools and you can do basically the same things. It's just a lot easier to do it using your finger or your Apple Pencil than to do it on your Mac screen. And then I can just tap Done here on my iPhone and I've got those changes. And here's one final idea for you that's a little different than the rest. You can use Markup to tint your photos to a certain color. Now you can go here into the Color Adjustment Tools and change the cast, vibrance, do other things to try to kind of get the color that you want. But with Markup Tools you could just simply put that color on top as a rectangle. So what we'll do first is create a rectangle, place it here. Let's set the border to nothing and then let's set the color we want to use to the fill color for the rectangle and let's have it cover the entire thing. Then we'll go back to Color here and choose Show Colors and I'm going to make it semi-transparent and you can see the image show through. So I can give a slight color tint to everything using this. And then I can go and change the color and tint it to anything that I want. So you can see here's the result with a strong blue tint. Here's the original. I can follow that up with a little bit of brightness and more exposure there to restore some of the brightness that is being covered up by the rectangle there. So there are some ideas for using the markup tools in the Photos app to do creative things with your photos. And remember you can combine these as much as you want. So you could add some arrows, a loop, tint the color, add a border, and add a caption all to the same photo. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.